The second semi-final is about to commence. Liquid fans have prepared themselves with body armor, it seems, as they're ready to go ahead and deal with what will be the second semi-final. No North Americans here, but we certainly have got someone from the Americas. The South American Brazilian powerhouse SK is going to be clashing with a very scary Virtus Pro. They have proven that they are not to be trifled with. We say they play up to the level of their opponents, and what better than two in a row back-to-back -back major champions, world champions and defending champions as well. It's a lot of champions. <laughs> it's going to be good. Duncan, Yanko, of course, YNK and Thorin. Gentlemen, one semi-final before we have our grand final ready to go. Navi in the grand finals. And so this is where we just kind of, we just get a quick taste of who we believe is going to be, you know, lining that grand final stage alongside Navi and, and justify those reasons. Let's start with SK though. Yes, I've already said that champion word about 900 times. Yep. They've won a lot of titles, though. Uh, yeah, so, can you, could you kind of quickly before. outline exactly, you know, we talk about the majors, but what makes these guys so damn good? Sure, well, what's so great about the era that they had is that basically the majors sort of bookend those championships because they won one championship, the major, then they had Dream Mac Austin, admittedly NA competition, but they easily handled everyone at that competition. They were able, obviously, to win ESL Pro League Season 3 finals, that amazing series against G2 in the final, very, very memorable. Oh, sure. They obviously came back and at the major, ESL One Cologne, that is, were able to win only dropping one map in the whole competition to this team. Also, the team they'd only dropped the one map in at MLG Columbus. And then that's really the breadth of it at the moment. Like, that's the interesting thing. They've been very dominant, but because of, for example, injuries, keeping them out of tournaments, and then obviously the, the debacle that meant they didn't play in the playoffs of E-League, Weirdly, for such a dominant team, they haven't had that many actual titles brought in. Like, they, right. listen, two majors is pretty big. <laughs> but beyond that, it's only a, a smattering, you know. They ha it's not like those teams who can run through, like, Fnatic, I think, last year won 12 titles or something. In know? terms of quality, their, their titles are enormous, but in terms of sheer quantity, they sure. don't have that many yeah. to show off. Pretty. And in stark contrast, Yanko, Virtus Pro, who have just got this, I mean, plethora of history within this game and its franchise. Definitely so. I mean, players like... Uh, Taz and Neo playing together in the same team for more than 10 years. Pasha has been there for a long time as well. This lineup in itself, staying together for more than three years. So I think that in across all like versions of CS, when it comes to tier one teams, I think that's, that's unprecedented. Duncan will correct me if I'm wrong. But the, the good thing about this team, what makes them so strong is that they're probably the most unpredictable team we have, right? generally in the scene, right? Because they're so vers versatile in terms of who's the main opera of the team, who's the in-game leader of the team. Sometimes we see them switch that up in just one game, right? When they're not feeling, when they, they, when they think that they're getting figured out slowly, they just, just switch it around, someone else starts calling, yeah. and that makes it much more difficult for the other team to, re to get a read on them. You've got a very kind of concentrated world-class Brazilian side, and you have a team that in some way or another have played together for 10, if not three years in this form alone. Two very different storylines that we'll be exploring further, but before, without further ado, we have to get those semi-finalists on stage. And so it's over to Paul to go ahead and welcome the Brazilians and the Poles to the New York. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Machine. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, for the ESL1 New York semi-final number two. Two teams meeting that could grace any grand final. The number one and number two teams in the world go head to head for a place in the grand final. Our first team are double major champions. They are the defending ESL1 champions. The number one team in the world, SK Gaming. team who are no stranger to these matchups, one of their nemesis teams over the last 12 months, also a former major champion and on a hot streak right now in Counter-Strike Global Offensive with not one but two titles in the last two weeks. Can they make it three out of three? Let's find out as we welcome Virtus Pro! <laughs>
almost ready. You guys are ready at home, I know, and the guys here in the Barclays Center are also ready to cheer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Virtus Pro versus SK Gaming. SK and VP in a best of three. Well, we did leave off before the teams did go ahead and make their way onto our glorious stage here in the Barclays Center. We started talking about just how different their rise to power has been. Uh, I think I'd want to return to the SK thread for a moment, Duncan, because I really do enjoy this. I don't think we often explore it on desks, but you know, you call yourself the esports historian. A lot of people would find this quite surprising. If they tuned out of CS for like a year or so, perhaps yeah. a little longer, they would be wondering where on earth these guys came from. Could you perhaps fill them in? I mean, these guys sure, have come yeah. from nowhere to being undisputed world's best. Yeah, and it's in less than two years, actually. What happened right. was Brazil was essentially a non-factor in 2014 and before in CSGO. So the first two, two and a half years, no relevance whatsoever. Like they had one team that went to an ESWC, no one really cared, you know, they had no real performance. Then in early 2015, along came this team that was fallen, it was fur. I think, I think that might have been it at the time. And what happened was, they got a couple of upsets. They went to this MLG, they had like an upset there. And then the whole point was they were never gonna make it deep in a tournament. They were never gonna win a best of three, but they could get these odd up map upsets, famously originally on Mirage. Yes. And then as we went forwards, they went from, originally they were Kaboom, then they became Keyed Stars, they qualified for the Major. And the Major, because of the best of one nature at the group stage at the time, they shockingly made it to the round of eight. And this would happen throughout the year. The three Majors of the year were before they got the really great players. So they had these really good upset teams. They'd get out of groups every time. And then when they got to the best of three, no matter who they played, you know, they'd either play a team close on a map or they'd win a map, but they could never win the series. And so the problem was, that was always the knock. It's like, you're a really great, ah, oh, you're almost a great team. Like, you've got to be able to win series to be a great team though. And then they did this magical change, like two days before DreamHack Winter. And when they did this, they brought in FNX, they brought in Taco, and this just transformed the team because before that, okay, they had a star player, they had Cole Zero. He was very good, he was very consistent. But again, like I say, they, they didn't have enough firepower. They had the tactics. When they brought in FNX, this veteran presence, and then Taco to kind of be this do all handyman and uh, support type player. So all of a sudden, literally in the span of two days, they went from their first match getting 16 0'd to get, making it to the final and coming second place at a big tournament. I will never forget, it was at San Jose. I was at the San Jose after party and I spoke to Ford and I like, how's it going? He's like, we're gonna cut two players tomorrow. And literally, I remember that, I just remember his face, he was like, it's gonna be good, my friend. Listen, and me and Duncan, hell it was. Me and Duncan were there at the desk at DreamHack Winter after they lost 16-0 to France. And we're like, yeah, this is what happens when you change two players a day before a tournament. They went on to, to make it all the way to the grand finals, beating multiple opponents in best of threes. But I mean, just looking at the, the stats here, who obviously stands out is Fur, the player who actually was uh, out of play for a month having uh, uh, surgeries. So him having 100 ADR across the tournament, that's an amazing stat, especially for a player like him who took a step back in the team for the likes of Cold Zero. I mean, that's what we, we always kind of highlight is that when you lose that initial component, everyone started getting worried a, bit, a little bit about SK, of course, when but they didn't have that player due to injury. You can see how they struggled for a while during that period, and what's important there is that they pointed out themselves, especially on the CT side, how Fur is very important because he plays the rotator role. So it's not just about who gets the frags, it's about who's there to support, who's there, the first guy who can make the call, okay, should I be on, on this side or the other side? Not every player is capable of that. That's not something you see in stats well, most of the time. And there's a lot of things, of course, we do always have to highlight that stats do not cover everything. But Duncan, you know what time it is. It is going to be time to discuss maps. The best of three this time. We're away from the best of ones that previously SK did stamp their mark upon, but they've got well past that. And so a best of three between VP. What are you saying? I have a dream that we get a series that somehow train, mirage, and then the third one, insert what you want there, could be overpass, could be cobblestone, because okay. with the first bands of these teams, it's almost certain that they will go with the perma band. So the perma band for the guys from SK is cash. Now it just so happens, VP, that's right down the bottom of their map, they don't really want that, so great. Okay, Dust2 is all the perma band of the guys from Verse Pro. That's in theory the second weakest map for SK. So if each goes with their normal perma bands, it also actually enhances the rest of the series. So it makes it just so that, like, here's the thing. We know that VP played Dust2 once at E-League. It wasn't like amazing, but they just had a good run against NIP. We know that in the past, the SK guys can play cash. It's just, uh, just why bother when actually Dust2 was better for you before? So standard bans. So now we get the power picks, okay? If you're the guys from VP who are picking now, I think VP, despite what happened yesterday, really might just go ahead and pick Train, actually. They might just say, despite the fact we lost you on it yesterday, still a fantastic map for us. It's one that we're always confident on. Or they could pick Cobblestone. There's the other option, right? Because that's the one at the major 
Mirage. They were able to get that win on. And we do not, actually amazingly, we've got Mirage, but this time it's VP picking it. Now here's what's funny. This is the only team in the world that would pick Mirage into SK. Even Na'Vi started to go, I think we'll just keep Mirage to the side for a minute, maybe play <laughs> as a third man. So here's the question, is it SK who picks Train now? Because that would be the other obvious move at this point in time. This is my question though, Yanko. By VP picking Mirage here, SK have actually shown a recent pattern of sometimes banning out Cobblestone against dangerous opponents. That's going to then be available second ban rotation, right? So isn't VP probably just going to take it? Maybe. I, I, what I'm interested to see here is does SK pick Train? Uh, pick uh, Nuke. Because Nuke, Nuke is a map that they've shown that they, are, they want to play. Obviously, that mess of a veto process at the Major with yeah. VP actually picking it, then losing 16-5 on it. Okay, they decide against that overpass, another map that they're extremely strong on, that they managed to have multiple wins against Tier 1 teams. Probably the most notable one against Na'Vi in yeah. the Columbus final, a 16-2 win. And so. also, recently, we had... This is another map. Just as for the third ban, because in this process, in the best of ones, we had three bans. You saw some overpass bans from VP. You saw some... Cobblestone bans from SK. Now that SK has taken overpass here, with the second ban rotation, I have to figure from the guys from VP. I mean, you've got Train left. What else have we got? We've got Cobble and, Nuke. Cobble and we've got Nuke. Wow. I, I have to figure that, that like this the is this is very surprising because that means it's Nuke and Cobble. So it's almost like you're daring SK to, take to it. go into That's, Cobblestone. This is a game of chicken, basically. I think VP here is gambling on the fact. I think, they were, I think VP's I, messed that up. I think they were gambling yep. on the fact that uh, SK will feel more comfortable playing Cobblestone yep. than Nuke, but I SK agree. obviously has no problem with playing Nuke, especially against VP and especially against that result at yep. the Major. So this again is the problem. I think you pointed it out, Duncan, at the Major. It's not just the fact that VP like doesn't go for train like Vito's nuke is the fact that them vetoing train and forcing towards cobble gives you the impression that they lost confidence playing what's their best map essentially yeah, train yeah, right. against SK. That should be the dream if you're VP, right? If you can end up in a snap. Because by the way, if they'd have left Train and Cobble, SK almost certainly would have banned Cobble and let Train come. So for VP, they could have had on paper their best map as the decider. So again, now we can only really criticize this at the end if somehow VP sure, lost. Of course. But it feels like you're setting the stage for what happened in Cologne, where afterwards we're all looking back like you've got to start in the Vic pick ban and you messed it up. I mean, I just want to continue to reiterate that the, in that interview, they genuinely and rather embarrassingly admitted that they were not prepared for Nuke. It was a Hail Mary. They were just trying to do something crazy, yeah. Something crazy, a curveball. We are going to have to be quick, Yanko, so just start wrapping your prediction into your name. We'll have to wait for the post-game to see what their reasoning was. I think it yeah. was a gamble that didn't pay off. But, yeah, looking at the maps, Mirage, all right. But you picking it gives the chance to SK to pick side. And they're probably the best city-sided team on Mirage in the world. So, <laughs> always a question mark with VP. They can play up to SK's level, but I just think that right now SK is in better form and they take this. VP picking Mirage up. Going into, of course, Mirage versus SK is always an intimidating task. Duncan, what are you thinking? Just for the first map, why not? Yeah, here's the thing, actually. On Mirage, I still think SK is the best Mirage team, but actually, I'm going to give Virtus Pro this first map. I think, actually, they Ooh. have a fantastic record. They just don't get to play it very often. And so, I, I mean, I don't think it's going to be a 2-0 series, so I think VP is going to take this one and then we'll see what happens on Overpass. Oh yeah, and we'll certainly see what happens with Nuke if that does become reality. I'm certainly intrigued to see how this series does play out. And you know, someone else, where I said the people that are also very interested is our casters. Before I do throw them up on your screens, a big thank you to one of our sponsors is Alienware, who have, alongside others, enabled us to make this event a reality here in the Barclays Center. And it has been wild for fans and casters alike. But big thank you to them. Of course, the Alienware 15 Touch Signature Edition. They're doing, I think, $1,000 off. It's a mad deal. So do be sure to give it an eye up if you're in the market. For now, now, though, let's jump into it. It's SK versus Virtus Pro. Our first map is Mirage. All eyes on Virtus Pro as they go into, well, the Brazilian's den. We'll see what the casters have to say. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to jump into this second semi-final now. It's SK versus VP, and we're going to be starting off first on Mirage. Moses is with me. Moses, your initial thoughts before we get into the set. Just, just echoing the sentiments of the guys on the desk. Uh, this, this nuke pick scares me because this was like this was at the major. It was VP. You had it. You felt like they had it, and then that nuke pick. Just you, you look back on that. I, I mean, to to pick that as well, and at the major, you have to feel like they had something prepared that just didn't work out. It was still a very new map at the time, so maybe putting a little bit 
work into it before this event. Maybe they've brushed up on it a little bit, have something different, but that's a scary map for VP to have as, as the deciding map in this series if it gets there, just because SK's already just destroyed the model. It wasn't even a close game, it was a dismantling. Uh, so that's a little bit frightening, but other than that, these first two maps, Mirage and that overpass, this is going to be, uh, I mean, to see these two teams face off on these maps uh, is going to be excellent. Cool styles of plays, really exciting Counter-Strike to come out. In contrast, though, a couple weeks ago in the ESL Pro League, this is actually where we saw on Nuke is where SK actually dropped the map to the Renegades. That was one of the areas where they were having issues with Granite. They were still missing one of their members at that time, and they were struggling a bit there. They also there, got 16 0 by Renegades. That's so, true. I mean, we can't put all of, we can't, you know, Very give true. too much credit to all of that. <laughs> But still, it was a bit of a yeah. factor there, so we'll see if that ends up coming into play. They brought a very weak T side to the table in that matchup, and obviously we'll need to see that improved if that ends up going to the third map. But starting off here on Mirage, and also giving SK the side choice, too, they're going to be able to jump onto the CT side right at the beginning. What kind of advantage is that going to give them? Uh, normally, you'd say it gives a pretty decent advantage, but this this team, these two, both of these teams, actually, along with Na'Vi, are those teams known for just, you know, getting their T rounds on, on the difficult maps to find them. The offenses are very, very good. They're so good at grinding rounds out. They're very good at adjusting and, and you know, know, uh, changing, changing tactics to any kind of difficulty they run into. So both teams very, very capable of having strong offenses. And we saw as well yesterday, too, that VP actually, on train specifically, were struggling a little bit on their T side. Do you think any of the issues we saw yesterday are going to carry over onto this map, or do you think that that's not necessarily going to be as dependent here on Mirage? Uh, they, they could. I mean, the scary part of watching VP on train yesterday, it, there seems to be some something that SK does on the defense that that kind of intimidates Virtus Pro, which is really weird, all things considering VP's playstyle that we normally see, but that train they busted out against SK was, was slower, it was methodical, we didn't see any of that trademark kind of aggression, aggressive explosiveness on the outer bomb site. Um, I mean, if that's something that's going to happen on the T side here on Mirage, on Overpass, that, that's a huge advantage to SK, taking away that kind of intimidating pressure that VP likes to put on. All right, guys, well, it's time to get into the pistol round. Make some noises. We're going live now. It's VP versus SK. Virtus Pro, we're going to be starting off on the T side, SK on the CT side. The pistol round begins right now, and we'll immediately get into it, too. VP actually bringing a lot of utility to the table. Only two players going for armor buys, and they're going to go right for a T ramp push. Yeah, two HE needs on Snacks and Neo. This is going to go towards FNX at this ticket booth, so he's got to be very, very careful. Once the execute comes up, the first two Nades thrown at him are going to be the HEs. There they are. He gets one anyways, though. They actually haven't done anything. Two quick headshots for SK and a third. This has been shut down. A clean pistol round for SK. Not even moving an inch there on SK. Shutting down the entire Virtus Pro offensive without blinking an eye. And with that, obviously, they're going to get off to a great start here. VP, unfortunately, trying to push it into the site. Just does not work out at all. And now they get into the second round. Not even close to a bomb plan either. So we could see them four. So though, it looks like for now, they're just going to be, for the most part, upgrading their pistols. Though there is a couple players also picking up armor buys as well. What a sick round from FNX. He gets that first kill through the smoke and then just builds off of it. But it seemed like the nades just didn't get to where they wanted. That's definitely to clean FNX out. And I, I know Neo got an assist on one of his teammates dying. So perhaps he gets killed with a nade in his hand and it just drops at their feet. So a little bit fortunate for SK in that regard, but a brilliant pistol round. And VP here, of course, right into the second round and right into the mid control that they so love to take in the early portions of these rounds here. Snacks wasting no time moving himself out through the underpass. And also two players up on top of mid too. Snacks looking for an early peek in there, but actually SK guys, with the exception of course of Cold here, are being rather passive about it. Cold takes up the position on cap, but everybody else is playing the sites and they actually have three stacked in the A-bomb site, only leaving Taco to defend a possible push out from the apartments. Yeah, and they're fine to give up mid control in this scenario because even with upgraded pistols, even with the deagles, which can be dangerous, I mean, there's no more utility on VP's side, so actually this mid control doesn't look like it's going to lead to too much. Cold's going to hold strong for one, but it's a good trade off by Neo. Snacks found a good position, and there goes Fallen. Neo with two calls, great pinch by Virtus Pro. And now Taco going to wrap himself out around the cat area here, picking up one kill. Hasn't spotted the second player yet, but Neo again. There's that hesitancy we're talking about. And with that, Taco's going to be allowed to wrap around, although he does get taken down by Snacks. This will be brought into a two-on-two, -two, and the SK players, well, they're maxed out of this site a little bit here. VP are able to push in, however, Furher doing damage at long range with a shotgun, switching over to the pistol. He's going to be down at 3 HP. Doesn't want to dare peeking out again because they still need to worry about the post plant. He'll let the VP players get away and onto that B site for now. And what a ballsy fight by Bialy. And I mean, Fur almost baits him into committing there with the shotgun, but not dying allows him to get the bomb and get up towards the site. So that's huge. Fur gonna lead the way with three HP, and that's, this is always the question. Do you use the low HP to bait? There's an easy kill for Snacks. He's just gotta bail out. They can set up a great crossfire. Molotov and FNX is in front of it. Oh, he's got them both! The clutch player. FNX brought in, he's always had impact in the late round situations and a beautiful performance there. And with that, he's going to immediately shut down VP's attempt to offset in this second round. They get to keep it going, although a lot of damage done by VP and they are able to get the bomb on the ground, giving them that extra cash. 
So money building up, of course, and they're actually, at least in Taz's case, they're going right for the buy into this next round immediately, investing into AKs and upgraded pistols. Yeah, and this, this, isn't, a, this isn't a bad idea by, by Virtus Pro whatsoever. It's very, very aggressive, but they know with four kills that round, they've got the economy so low. This forces a save out of SK and Virtus Pro's to win this. Tough part is, I mean, Fur even maybe misreading the situation. Obviously, you can't really expect this all the time, but SMG on him, so a little bit of a disadvantage for the SK side. And actually, FNX eats a great nade. Fantastic chip damage onto him. The rest of VP in the meantime, we're seeing a couple players trying to push their way into the apartment. Taco sees that coming though, and Cold holding off an initial push up towards Cat. They try to slow push towards it, and both of them just destroy. Taz thankfully fine in the trade, giving VP a little bit of room to work with, but immediately FNX and Taco are here. Taco will get knocked out. FNX still remaining strong though. He's picked up two kills at 4 HP. He's going to be a little careful, but Viali is at half of that. We actually see Viali nicely done, throws the knee in the back, grabs that kill against FNX. But Viali now stuck in the 1v2. He's going to get flanked on by Fur. And another shutdown round for the SK players, starting them all 3 0. Cold Zera holding off that cat hit is the key to that victory for SK. UMP against a couple of rifles, and he, he manages to get them both. And that eliminates half the attack onto that B site from Virtus Pro. So great job by him. And now finally, the pressure abates a little bit. Virtus Pro. They're going to come into this round. They have a couple pistols upgraded, a little bit of utility, but no armor, no, no real bite to this attack. Taz as well will go on hunting here in the first couple seconds of the round, trying to see if he can catch anybody moving their way up over here towards the T-Ramp, but he's been naded out and back there, so won't be challenging that anytime soon. This is going to allow FNX to take that aggressive position, and the rest of VP are still looking to push their way up towards top mid, with Snacks moving in from the underpass. Same as the second round, pretty much the same exact game plan that we saw here, and SK uh, echoing that too. Well, Zara pushing up towards Cat and a couple other players in the A site. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah, and that's basically the same. Ooh, FNX takes a little bit of damage. There's a kill, though, on Snacks. FNX still very low. Taco flanking underneath, and he's just ending things. The M4 ringing out. There goes Neo. Posh is eventually going to find him. So still, I mean, great damage is being done by Virtus Pro, even with just the pistols, even without armor or too much utility. So they're, they're, they're keeping the money low early on in this half from SK. And Bial is going to push himself up towards the connector here. But Fallen, waiting for that one, is going to find himself an easy shutdown for Posh as the last man standing here. He's got an M4, but obviously no armor behind it, no extra utility, and SK know exactly where he's playing from here. Just trying to hold his own and grab any additional kills. He actually does get that kill into Fur, who drops right into his spray. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> That's, uh... All right, good on you, Pasha. So, 4-0 quickly, but I mean, I, you can see the money is just so very low, or you can't quite yet, but um, SK, they, I mean, Virtus Pro has done everything they possibly can to keep this money as low as possible. It's still a decent buildup and a really, really strong buy for the defense, but still in that dangerous territory where this is not, they don't have a great hold on this, and that's, that's a tough start for Cold Zera already out of the fight. The op from Pasha rings out. And the question becomes now, when does Taz pounce? How aggressive does he want this lurk to be? Oh, the timing was almost there. In the meantime, though, Fallen is going to be able to pick up a shot from his op there. Although, again, he overpeaks back from the back from just outside of Ticket Booth there, and he's going to get taken down in Snacks. He's found another one. He's got Fur blind, spraying him in the foot to begin with there, but gets him to peek out, shuts him down. Now we're in a 4v2. Taco trying to turn this in the favor of the CT still somehow, but FNX can't support. We've been seeing him come out big in these first couple of rounds, but he's gone quiet as of late. Now we need to see him jump back in, making a lot of noise, and it's not going to ring against anything there. Taco. Now the last man standing is going to try to push his way, at least try and find something through the connector here, but more than likely this will just lead into a save for him. Yeah, there's, there's nothing he can really do here. A great round from Virtus Pro. The one pick from Pasha, and Taz grabs a great angle, and Taco doesn't even try and save it. He sticks around to try and get an extra kill, and therefore there will be no M4 into the next round. So it's SK who's going to be forced back on towards pistols. And even, I mean, look at Cold Zera, $1,450 for him. That means even though they save, actually, he just flat out buys up because he's going to be in a double save scenario no matter what. And even now, a little bit of a late investment. It looks like actually SK is going to invest everything they have into this round. Fallen and FNX, uh, the most money, 1800 and 1600 kept on both of those players. And a good find again from Pasha. Two rounds in a row, Pasha moves right up there and, s and snatches a player outside of the window area. However, Fallen himself moves back over there and trades it just the same. Taking down Taz brings us into a four on four. Yeah, Fallen is a very intimidating scout player, one of the best in the world. You can see it there, a good headshot onto Taz. And Snacks now, I mean, again, there's mid control for Virtus Pro. They've got Snacks at a pretty aggressive angle. Taco's just gonna walk right into it. After we do see Virtus Pro getting that initial kill, slow and steady seems to be what's gonna be giving them at least a bit of an advantage in the race here now as they do try to molly out this player in window. No one 
being flushed out from the initial Molotov, so just the usual smoke up. And now the rest are actually going to abandon the top mid and wrap back around over here to T-Ramp to go for just a normal A hit. Yeah, VP slows everything down. They're waiting for some kind of information. Someone from SK to push to see if they can punish that, maybe thin out the defense a little bit more. And this is a gamble from SK towards the A site. They don't really have too much information, but it works off for them. Cold in the site, followed with that scout. That's the dangerous weapon at hand as the smokes rain in. And they're going to push themselves up to the site pretty quickly. They're fallen, waiting for it with that scout. Missing the first connection here, but there's also Cold Zera waiting over here behind the trip stack. Posh is going to strike first against Fallen, and Bialy follows it up himself. Now it's just Fur, and he's stuck behind a wall of smokes over here outside of the window room. So VP in pretty good control of this one, and I doubt Fur is really going to be able to make that much of an impact. Yeah, he's got armor and a kit, so really no reason for him to risk that too much into this round. They're going to have to save in the next one, so at least have a Deagle of something that can get a kill, something that can maybe give his team a little bit of a window of opportunity to win it but doesn't want to overextend here. So Virtus Pro, slow start going down 0 to 4, but the, uh, off the virtue of, of doing good damage throughout these four spies and those eco rounds they had, uh, immediately grab an advantage here. Two in a row, and SK is going to spend a couple of rounds with light and weaker buys. And it's been off the back a lot of Pasha. I mean, the, these op picks that he's gotten, one against uh, Cold with an AWP, the other the next round just against a pistol, but finding ways to get a man advantage, and that's, that's going to be really, really beneficial. That will still finally put a round onto the board here for the VP roster. Finding something, and now, of course, the big test is consistency. Can they keep it going? Well, that, might, that task might prove to be a little bit easier here, as again, SK, their money not sitting in the best position. They have a couple guys floating around 2K, so I think a lot of these guys are actually just going to go for a half by your upgraded or pistols, maybe some buying up R behind it, and that'll be exactly it, as you can see now from the left side. Bialy now, the one towards Palace, and oh, Snacks almost finds a pick. That's dangerous. Oh, there it is. Fur comes back for more, and he gets taken out. Does get a dink through the, with just a pistol, but can't match that AWP, and there's a little bit of aggression over towards the A site. Fallen and FNX, you know, doubled up on balcony on top and underneath, but VP's going to take this one slow. Just your usual risk stack here from SK, trying to hope that they do manage to force these guys over here into the A bomb site. And VP, of course, as normal, just taking their time with things. They still keep Iali just outside of the A site there, making sure no one decides to push in against them. But in a moment here, he's going to push himself up, and it does look like VP are trying to work their way over towards it. The Molotov is going to the connector first, and Posh is slowly going to sneak over here to try and see if he can find anything. Peeking out from jungle, watch out for more info, but it's not the case. For the most part, Escare playing it back. And there you go, though. The patience pays off. They grab Taco, and they even push it into the connector itself to find Cole, too. Two quick pickups, and now we are going to see Ball going to try to push his way outside of the palace, but that doesn't work out so well. Bialy just shuts it out, and it's only FNX alive again here. Yeah, good awareness from Bialy in that round. So quickly, Virtus Pro respond with three of their own. FNX, uh, he's kind of stuck in the middle of nowhere. Might be able to get one kill, maybe two if they don't clear this corner, but shouldn't really be any opportunity to win the round. And VP close to evening up the scoreline. Almost Sita has getting knocked out there, but he holds his own, is able to keep himself alive with that VP and one, one gun round of tying this up. I think the big issue is that Coldzera shaved off that mustache. That was a very powerful true. mustache. It's gone now, they've lost the power. It'll be interesting to see how he adapts to that situation. Well, the op is in Fallen's hands, that's gonna be over towards the A-bomb site. This time, not a whole lot of pressure. I mean, this is the first time in a long time VP hasn't sent their own AWP over towards mid, so that's actually Snacks and Palace at the moment looking for someone to push up, but eventually he's going to move forward uh, and grab the angle here, and that's going to peer towards connector, towards jungle, towards top of stairs, and he can be very, very patient and try and find a pick by someone being forced away. Still waiting, though, for them to move in, and of course, SK actually giving uh, VP once again a lot of room to work with this, but again, with the only real exception being called Zera to play a little bit more aggressively and peeking out towards catwalk there. They don't really have anyone aggressively peeking out towards mid in the connector area, and FNX himself is not going to dare to peek out towards window. He's holding on the outside area in jungle, waiting to see if anyone's going to boost up through underpass, and VP are returning that in the same kind of style of play here. They're taking it very passively as well. With only having one or two of their guys moving forward to try and grab any early intel. But now, with the time getting low, of course, they need to make some moves, and they're going to just strike here to take that mid control as usual. Yeah, but Fur is going to have something to say about it from Connector in front of the smoke, and then he disappears inside of it. So no chance for a response yet for VP, but slowly they're constricting onto this A site. Flash through the smoke, fire to make Fur look at it, but it doesn't work. He falls anyways. Fallen, meanwhile, with the AWP. He's going to grab two. Ticket Booth is a strong position for him, and it's just snacks left. One on three, the AWP has found one kill, but he's got to do more and at least try and get this bomb planted, but he's in the open. 
He's going to try and find a pick before going for the plant, but he stops just before spotting Taco Jump. Taco still safely tucked away in the CT spawn over there. We do actually see a flashbang move in, but unfortunately the shot from Snacks ends up clipping off the boxes there, so it's not going to connect. Golzera finds that final kill on the round, and SK do get to keep themselves in a very dominant position leading here. Yeah, and good to have three players survive. They now get a double op setup for free. So, I mean, that's all things. They struggled so much with the economy in those first four rounds. Now that they have their fifth, they've got a little bit that they can lean on. And we know how powerful the double op setup is for Fallen and Cold Zera. It is such a dangerous thing to go against. Although it actually, okay. I was wondering if they were gonna drop those guns. Looked like Taco wanted to pick it up for a second. But for right now, VP are Oh, and just be rolling with the five rifles. They themselves had enough cash to be working into this round. We can see Pasha too. They're trying to go for that initial peak once again, but he's only back out of there and has to fall back around the corner. This is going to be a quick round from VP. They want it to be faster. They had the money for an AWP. They don't buy it. So this is going to be a very, very fast split. But these Molotovs slowing them down. Nice job buying time from the SK side of things. Taco and Cold Zera, he's going to get his perch with the AWP, but he's blinded and Snacks finds it. Cold does not try and hide. He tries to wait out the flashbang. Now it's all on Taco. He's got to do more. Teammates are coming in. They're still a couple seconds away. No one pressuring Taco from VP until just now, huge kill for Taco, and now the reinforcements are here, but they are blocked out. They are locked in market. A lot of damage done to some of these players from VP, so SK have a primer to get themselves in the site. Their problem, though, is going to be a lapse of utility. First sitting on a smoke and a flashbang. We do see the trade start to begin, though, and it's SK. They yield the advantage. Fallen grabbing that option against. Pasha leaves it all in the hands of Taz here. Stuck in the back corner. He's going to try to change his position, but he's got to be careful on the cross of fur. He spotted him, though, and picking back out does a little bit more damage. Time running low for these CTs. They need to take this ground back, and Taz is losing it very quickly. Trying to hold, tries to go for that kill against fur, but it does not pay off. Fallen is going to shut him down from across the site, and we will end up seeing another round go on the board for SK. Yeah, really nicely done for uh, for SK there. I mean, just making sure that Taz is kind of locked in that back corner. He was trying to take fights, trying to find one-on-ones, but... No one from neither Four nor Fallen committing to that kind of a battle. Pause here for uh, for the Virtus Pro side of things. Three to six. They've got plenty of money again with a plant. That's two plants in a row for them uh, through these through these two round losses. But that's going to give them uh, plenty of money. They can get whatever they want to work with. Yeah, they're going to have no problem at all taking this into another gun round for themselves here. So all they're going to have to do now is figure out how exactly they can take this on the T side or something that works. They've been having no problems getting mid control. Uh, similarly to actually the train match we saw yesterday, their big problems came when they're actually trying to get onto these sites. When they're trying to find these opening kills, they're losing a lot of their players in the opening volley. And then obviously that leads to many, many problems in the post plant scenarios. SK's defensive mid has actually been pretty cool as well. I mean, they're not actually fighting to keep it uh, throughout the round. I mean, they, they fight to the point where they get one kill and they just want that advantage and then they fall back behind all the smokes that are thrown and they just take that man advantage into the mid round. So, I mean, SK Gaming very, very well known for being effective at playing with the man up situation, but at the moment it's going very, very well. Virtus Pro tries to change the pace on him, goes away from the AWP. This time they're going to go back to it. So maybe a little bit of a slower round as the Molotovs from SK just kind of delayed that very fast catwalk hit for a long, long time. And dispatching with some of these more key players from SK too, most notably Fallen, who's been allowed to just go all out with his op on round, around, around again, has been just destroying VP. So still looking for a way to make sure they can dispatch of him too. Like back over here by Ticket as he's playing right now, but he's also changed up his position a couple of times. Over on the opening of this round, of course, VP gonna split once again. Three of them initially working their way over towards the A site with two also working their way into the B-Halls, and then we have the usual position from Pasha over on top mid. The op is on a ramp at the base of it. That's on Snacks, and he was smoked off initially, so a little bit of time wasted where he couldn't really go for any kind of a pick. Neo's coming from underpass, and Pasha has control of mid as well. And this SK Gaming defense, three players at A, Cold now rotating back, but you can see Virtus Pro, they're lining up for this execution at any moment, and there's Fur with an opening kill. That's on Taz and Palace, so one part of this three-piece attack has been eliminated. We are going to see the Molotov going on to Fur. He tries to push out, but the guys from VP back away. Not only is that Molotov going to burn for a lie, but the Neo and Pasha grab two more on the way into the site. They've cleaned it out. The only one they've got to worry about here now is Fallen back by Ticket, and also on that cross, Taco has a ride back over here on Cat. Pasha's got that covered. At least hopefully he thinks he does anyway, and now they're going to be able to push up to the bomb site here too. Fallen being restricted, good flashbang control going on to him. He can't do anything, and Taco just caught with a knife out. So there you go. Fallen, unfortunately, knows he can't pull this one off, so he's going to try to escape. Quick shot from him. Landers to take down at least one of these players. Still, though, isolated in a 1v3, and he's got nowhere to run. Sick timing hit from VP. A palace gets taken out. 
that push through connector and a ramp at the same time is huge for them. Pasha with two kills on the round, but he got that one critical inside the A bomb site. I believe it was uh, the whoever was playing uh, right by the stairs who burned alive. Can't remember who that was. I think it was Fur. But the second kill into that site was the critical one for VP. And now they've got four. And again, SK, despite two wins, they're put right back onto pistols. So VP, I mean, despite some of the struggles they've had, are doing a fantastic job controlling the economy. They've got a couple easier ones, and, and Neo manages that push very well. Fallon's the next one up, and Neo already spots him out, so not a whole lot of danger can come from this. He does get him to use his Molotov at the very least there. He's using that bit early on in the round, but obviously now rest that these guys are going to be on an eco. Virtus Pro will start to poke in part of the bomb site. No reason to rush things as per usual here. Since we could, they could be being drawn essentially into a trap there. SK have gone for a full stack onto the site. They'll still play it back. They'll still take things per usual here. And the players from SK, of course, are trying to do a little, something a little cheeky here on the B-bomb site. But for now, we won't see any action following up towards it. They will only get snacks from that position. The cool thing is, I mean, over in Palace, I've seen I've seen Taz play that. I've, we've seen Neo now. We've seen snacks in there with an AWP. Uh, but but may, every single round, VP has like a three-man squadron that's designed to take map control and two players on the extremities who are just there to hold each side of the map. Here comes that stack. The bottom player, Coldy, gets two. What is this? But there's no more that can come from it. Two players in one spot, but Virtus Pro, I mean, with those two players on the extremity, they're basically just keeping options open on the whole map before they decide where to go. They want to make sure they have that control. If they need to fall back towards A, if they need to fall back towards B, they have those options available. And unfortunately for Fallen and Taco, they were in no position to try and trade that. Fallen's even trying to play these guys over here on Cat a little bit. Tried to jump up a few seconds ago. We got Dink down to seven. He's certainly not in the best of spirits at this point. And well, there you go. He's going to get knocked out by Neo there finally. Taco has some better luck moving in there. Get some nice shots and a snacks. Doing some damage at the very least here, but again, only that one kill to be found. Taz immediately trades him out. It's a bit different from the last string of rounds we saw VP being able to pick up there, as those were really clean. This time, it's a bit different. Only surviving with two players is not going to allow them to immediately build up a bank this time. I imagine we'll see a little bit more aggression out of SK this round. They don't have a whole lot to, to play with. Uh, I mean, this is going to be a buy. They have three M4s, but there's only one smoke across those three. They have a FAMAS and a UMP, so you imagine they take a little bit maybe of advanced positions, and here's the drop out a window. They want to go for a bit of map control. They don't have the utility to sit back, so it's all on this push. There's a good trade, but it's traded back and forth, and VP comes out on top. And with that, again, VP is going to punish the aggression from SK. Dominating in that respect, leaving only Cold and Taco up and running here in VP. No reason to waste on this one. They're going to group up over here in the T-Ramp and try to go for a push. This actually does buy time, though, because they're taking it a bit slow for SK to group up here. They've taken the risk on it. They've sent Taco to group up over here towards the window room, so they can try and play this together. But at the same time, Coldzera up on the platform. Oh, this could actually prove to be very interesting later on in the round. He's going to back into the palace here. And if they don't decide to check this, he could do some serious damage from up on top when he tries to push back into the site. They're not going to check it. They just need to make sure they have it under control. Maybe a Molotov, someone watching for it. But this is a playmaking position from Cold. He lets the first one go. There's the flashback. Oh, and Pasha! Looks up at the right moment. That was the one danger in this round for VP. Taco does not have anything he can do. Now that he's been spotted out and given his position, he's just got to run off. Another round, VP ties it up at six to six. Only that SMG being saved, and again, that's not going to yield enough money for SK to be able to viably go for another buy in the next round, at least, unless they want to force it. But to this time, it's probably not going to be advisable. VP are tying it up, and they might just be able to take the lead here, too. Although Taco having another opportunity to find at least one kill, actually trade that up for an AK as well. So finding something to scavenge with. He'll be challenged again though in a moment here. We do see Bialy pushing in from underpass and Bialy is gonna take him down. No saves at all for SK. Clean slate for the Brazilians as they go into the 13th round here and a tie game as well. Yeah, well, that was an aggressive buy out of them because of what they could bring into it behind the rifles. So instead of saving and waiting until they get the AWPs back on board, they're actually in a really tough spot here where they could go for an even weaker buy if they wanted to, but that, that would pretty much seal the fate of the half. That would yield control of the half to VP if they don't win it. So maybe this round from SK, I mean, they're starting to get the losing bonus built up. It's three rounds now. So maybe go for a light buy, some upgraded pistols. I doubt there's going to be too much armor, but maybe a little bit of utility to see if you can create some magic. And SK are going to be using their first tactical pause of the half here as well. Just try and figure out again how they can counter this out and make sure they still maintain the lead. With Virtus Pro stacking up these rounds on T side too, if they show up strong with a good CT set of performance like we saw yesterday, that is where it's going to get a bit dangerous for the SK roster. And it's where Virtus Pro could sneak away with this first map. Well, the unpause comes in, and indeed it is just pistols for the SK side. Backs against the wall here. 
tough, uh, tough first half for them so far. Virtus Pro has done such a good job of preventing this double op setup from not only being effective when it was employed, but preventing it from really even coming out whatsoever. I think there's only been like two rounds where SK's had two AWPs, so this has been phenomenal on the T side for VP. SK not going to decide to play a wrist stack again as they have in some of their past Seeker rounds here. They're just going to go for a normal split. Two of their players pushing into the B-bomb site and most of them taking up normal positions too. A little bit aggressive out towards mid this time as FNX goes for an early peak. But for the most part here, still part of the course here for this roster. Although maybe the defense is weaker on the site itself is definitely going to add some additional pressure to these players that are on the site. Mainly just falling here too as he tries to take up a position on the platform. Doesn't work out. Coldzera though has a nice spot inside of the smoke. Grabs one kill then immediately goes down. And the rest of this, unfortunately, is walled off, smoked off, mollied off, whatever you want to do to it. Unfortunately, they can't do a lot about it. And Pasha just sitting on the bench there, waiting for the peaks in the connector. Grabs one, although a nice response from FNX. An instant headshot onto Pasha to take him back down. The rest, though, is under control, and this is where it's going to get a lot harder for these SK players to find kills. Well, there's time to go for this still. Taco on a flank. He needs to do something right now if they're going to make this doable. No kit, and I think the bomb timer might be too far gone, but they can still try for it. See if they can do any damage. Snax is going to jump up, and he's not taken out immediately, but he is just there. That forces Taz into a commit, and there's the danger. FNX falls. Virtus Pro can get out of here comfortably, just making sure that Taco cannot bring a weapon into the next round. Seven to six, VP takes the lead. And there we have it now, fighting so long throughout the course of this half to be able to get that lead. And finally, they've done it, of course. But again, things could just be lost directly after this. The gun rounds have been the real issue here. VP have been doing a great job of keeping the money for the CT side low throughout this entire half. Now they finally broke them. They were able to gain the lead off of that. But they're right back into another gun round. And this is where things have been a lot closer. And for the most part, a lot more dominant for SK. So they're going to have to watch out here and make sure they don't immediately lose the lead. They just fought so hard to get. Again, a change of pace. It looked like Neo. I mean, he, as the in-game leader, he wanted to switch things up. He wanted to get Taz or uh, Snacks, excuse me, into position to to watch for Taco jumping, and that's a position that Navi actually caught him out in a couple times, jumping to spot these B halls yesterday. So if you get Snacks in a similar spot, he can hit that shot, find an advantage for his team. For for now, it doesn't work. The Molotov and the smoke rain out in sequence, and and they can do nothing. So complete rotation to the other side of the map for Virtus Pro. All five of them going to line up for what's probably going to be just a standard execution on the A bomb site. This is a good call. Look at Fur and FNX. There's been so much mid pressure from VP throughout this whole half that I mean, with with the cold, the three of them are designed to stop any mid pressure, but there's none coming. It's only fallen here at the site, so it's going to have to be a retake. Setting up the smokes here now, as we do see Virtus Pro preparing to push themselves into the site. Here they go. We will see FNX start to fall back a little bit here, but as you mentioned, it's all going to be on Fallen to try and cull anything that tries to push his way out of this T ramp. Flashed early on, but that's a very early flash. Tries to time shot it, but again, the smoke gets in the way of his vision there, and he's going to end up missing because of that. Now, we actually see FNX going for a very aggressive retake. That's a great flashbang, but he's burning. He drops right into the Molotov, and he's going to die because of that. Virtus Pro just play it back after being flashed. It works out perfectly for them, and now they're going to be able to walk right onto the site, only have any worry about Fallen. There's another flashbang, though, and Fallen's able to impact off of that. Fur working his way back in through the connector, too, taking down Taz. Suddenly, they have a chance at this, but Bialy's going to try to stop that. He takes down Fur. Snacks will hold the angle just around the firebox area here to make sure they don't push their way back in through CT. SK have held it out. They're going to let them get that bomb on the ground, and now they'll try to move back in for the retake, and oh, Fallen walking right out, shuts down Snacks. This will go into a 3v2, but Bialy returning the favor just in kind with his AK. We go into a 2v2, and now the final two for the CT side. Try to move in from Ticket Booth. They spot this player by the headshot glitch. Fallen's going to pick up that kill, and it falls to Bialy now. One on two, Bialy, tough spot for him. Fallen, no armor, they're watching for this. It's the op zoned in on the angle, and Bialy's so patient, but Fallen spotted him, and he's not baited out. Four kills for Fallen. The captain of SK brings him right back into it. That play from FNX looks so silly when he burns from 100 to zero, but what it did do was actually delay Virtus Pro getting onto the site long enough for the smokes to clear, and that's what gave Fallen all the opportunities he needed. Four kills with the AWP on that retake. And so off of that, the worst fears have been realized here as we go into the last round to see who will hold the lead off of this first half. Virtus Pro try to go directly for it, following with a shutdown, but he keeps himself in the open for too long. Pasha is going to be able to trade that out. Unfortunately, the hit was not on its way here. He'll be happy with that kill, and he's going to fall back to regroup with the rest of his team in the B halls. You can see the idea that Neo has these past two rounds. He's pretty much been buddied up. Snacks last round, and this time it's Pasha, and they get aggressive just to get one pick, and they find it this time on fall on a trade, but now a very quick hit to the B bomb site. There's three players here for SK, though. They're 
they're close to the bomb site. Bialy, big fight to win. Can he do more? They're trying to get this bomb planted, but there it is. That's the bomb out in the open. Taz now wrapping up the site, can't win either. Down into a two on two, the nades. Taco gets, oh no, oh. it catches him right at the end. But FNX, this is a sneaky play. There's no way VP expects him to be here. But you can see they're being very patient, waiting for the smokes to clear. He's been the clutch player so far for MSK, and he's gonna have to do it once again now. As VP try to move back in, they catch Pasha running out in the open. All he's gonna do is find Snacks, but Sneaky Snacks lurks his way around the backside, takes down FNX. And with that, the VP roster, they're gonna be able to hold the lead coming off of this first half. It'll be eight to seven in their advantage. And on the CT side, all I have to do is hold it to take this first map. This has been a, I mean, a great half for VP, 8-7. They did such a good job of controlling the economy. Not really a whole lot SK could do to get into it. But they do just enough, some clutch rounds there at the end. I mean, this is, we'll have to see if they, I mean, their own T side is very, very scary, very intimidating. So we'll see what they bring to the table. All right, guys, the second half is going to be coming up here in just a moment. Stick around, and we're going to be returning once again with more here between VP and SK. Curtis Pro start from the back of the pack in the first half, but by the end of this first half, they battled their way back, and now they hold the lead against SK on this first map of this best of three. Eight to seven is the current scoreline. They're about to jump onto the CT side, and SK have them out to Seaside here to try and run the comeback and take this map for themselves. Moses still with me. Moses going into the second half. What are you expecting to see now from either side? Oh, I mean, listen, Virtus Pro is so dynamic in the way they attack different positions, different bomb sites on this map in that first half. SK also known for their versatility but the, the different ways that they can uh, that they can win these rounds so it's actually a great job calling I, I think the big thing is the op was largely neutralized outside of one or two isolated rounds for sk i feel like virtus pro did a great job of preventing the ops from from doing any massive damage so um sk it's, it's gonna be remain to be, be seen if they can do the same thing on their t side all right well we are getting into it now the second half pistol is beginning once again for those who maybe just be joining us vp holds the lead eight to seven and as we go into the game, of course, we'll be able to see the opening buys. SK not really going for any utility at all, just five players picking up armor. Whereas on the other side, VP doing something similar, only having Neo going for the kit here, along with the nade pickup, whereas everybody else just goes for their armor buys. The benefit to this for, for SK, I mean, it's a little bit of a gamble, obviously not going for any smokes, but there's actually aggression from VP down the A ramp. So there's no one really, only Neo in mid. No one's gonna rotate at all. The timing, really unfortunate, almost gets caught out, almost even grabs a fadeaway shot. Here's the nade, could do damage, and it does. Pretty good, but Neo, that does more. And there goes Pasha as well. Neo has to do more. Bialy, that's the one coming back from Catwalk. That's the bomb down as well. And Neo still trying to hold on top of this trash can, but he does get taken out by FNX. It's a good thing that he goes down in the site, but Burr holding in the connector too, taking himself another battle, but Bialy is gonna win that one. FNX now in the site here with his teammate. They get partial control, but even they're a bit skittish to try and put that on the ground as they're already surrounded by VP. In the market area, there's a player looking up on Cat, and they've got one in the apartments to deal with too. And there you go, immediately that player from the apartments, Taz strikes, takes down Taco, FNX tries to sneak in, but a great setup from VP, doesn't let him do anything at all. Bialy from the cat position takes him down, and Virtus Pro will win the second half pistol. Bialy is a damn hero that round, getting back from that aggression on the A ramp to peer over towards Catwalk. 
drops the bomb from long range, sniffs out Fur, who's lurking, trying to pick off that kind of a rotation. And you could see SK, they wanted to get aggressive on market because that bomb was dropped, because they didn't actually get it planted. They knew they were going to be surrounded. They wanted to find one more kill, maybe fight their way to the A bomb site to find some kind of advantage in it, but a brilliant pistol from Virtus Pro. It's such a good thing too that Neo doesn't end up dying in mid, as if that happens, of course, and we see SK get control of the bomb site. Keep in mind, Neo had the kit that round, he would have died out in mid. If they are able to hold on to that, it prevents their possibility of a retake even more so. But FNX starting off this round well for SK, and Fur following it up with a second kill. Neo's back in here quickly, but he's not finding anything with that SMG, and now he's stuck in an overexposed position, trying to hold on. He's moving in now, but there you go. Fur has held a position to his left side, and all of a sudden it's a five on two. It looks like SK may just find the trade round. Yeah, that one deagle kill from FNX opens everything up. A nicely timed flashbang as well. And that B defense crumbles. And you can already see they're conceding this round. The two M4s, they're just saying, no, we'll bring them into the next one. We don't want to go for this. Bialy's got a fight as well, though. Taco does fall. FNX still flanking up. I think Pasha heard this. He'll be able to get him from behind. And he saves his teammate, perhaps. But SK, with these pistols, they're still going for more. They want to take these M4s away. And Coldzera moving in there too now, armed with an SMG. He's gonna try and hunt for Bialy or anybody else that he can find on this bomb site. They're looking to hold it, but Bialy doesn't dare want to peek against that one. Most of them are moving in here too, although it does appear they started to back up a bit. The final two players in VP will be safe. They will save those rifles, but it doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna be seeing a lot else added to the equation in this next round with SK trading it. Oh, I imagine they buy around these two rifles. I imagine they would want to go for more. You have the two, you might as well. Scout comes out onto Neo, and there's some upgraded pistol snacks. Uh, I believe he didn't, oh no, he spot out as well. So full investment for Virtus Pro, trying to steal this right back, and they're gonna go aggressive with it. Taz gonna lead the way, he's gonna be the tip of the attack. And Cold, looking for this kind of a push, doesn't spot it. Timing works out at least initially, and a lot of SK, a lot of their manpower is devoted to these B-Halls at the moment. Taz is going to try to still sneak up now that he's wrapped around the other corner of this one. Cold, though, is still in position to watch out for this exact push. So it's going to come down to the raw aim battle here. And on the initial play, actually, Snacks moving in through the underpass there. Heavy cost to himself, but he does pick up the kill. And now he's fighting for survival here, too. FNX around the corner, unloading the whole clip. And in the meantime, that battle over in top mid with Taz, he did win out versus Cold. FNX ended up taking down Snacks, but we still see VP holding the advantage. And they've got the bomb down here now, too. SK have no choice. They have to fight back for this. Pasha tried to take him an aggressive position, but he's only got the USP. And Taco finding another one. Allows SK to get their man advantage back three on two now. Unfortunate. Taz felt like he couldn't fall back safely. It looked like he wanted to get away for a moment, but that bomb was just too tantalizing for him to leave it. He had it dropped, and he didn't want to abandon that site. So SK, I mean, great performance from FNX, clearing out two kills. Taco as well with one. Still a little bit of danger. Bialy with that M4 is still around. He's over towards the B bomb site. Neo with the scout going to keep his eye on top mid. Actually, he's going to be overexposed, pushing up. He's only got the USP as well, and that's not the best weapon for that fight. All on Bialy, and he's basically just got to gamble. He's got to hope and pray they come towards B. And at the moment, they're shifting themselves up towards mid, so leaving the options open here, but only 18 seconds on the clock. They've got to try to rush towards it. It looks like they are just going to go directly towards B. Here's the thing, though, with Bialy in the way, if he can take down even a few of them, he could delay it long enough here. Unfortunately, takes the wide peak battle, and FNX is going to immediately shut it down. So SK, they'll be able to tie it up now, 9-9. I like the idea from VP, and actually, I mean, that's a little bit of a bummer. They had such an advantage of five on three in that round. Couldn't hold on. So nine to nine as SK fights back on their own T side. The interesting thing about this so far, and this is, uh, I don't remember the last time we've seen something like this, but Fur and Cold Zero, the two stars of, of SK Gaming, are at the bottom of the scoreboard. So that's a little bit scary. They need to come alive here. FNX is having a phenomenal game, 21 and 13 for him. First made his way into Connector and VP. This defense is crumbling. They only have pistols. Not a whole lot to hold on to. Ooh, that's a nice Mac 10. Nothing going to be picked up at all in this round for VP, unfortunately. Very lackluster arsenal. Most of them just rolling with their default pistols. So just wanting to get through that and get into this next gun round, of course, where they're all going to be investing into M4s. Unfortunately, their big problem is going to come for utility. They've got enough smokes and whatnot, so they've got the basics, but Molotovs and HE grenades, there's none of that to be found on any single player from VP. Ooh, and all five members of SK, this is going to be a fast hit towards that A-bomb site. No off to punish this, it doesn't matter. Taz gets a headshot, still mowing more down. Virtus Pro, hold on, the A-ramp is stopped, and there's Snacks on the bird. All down to FNX, one on three, but he has been stellar. Flashbang in the air, and he stinks back into the smoke, and he survives. 
to readjust, change his position, and see what else he can get. Going to try to wrap himself a little bit further away towards T-Spawn. A couple options from here that he could use, and obviously still being very cautious of the possibility that someone from VP could have pushed top mid and already be in that position that he was just checking. But he stays in this area for now, and he's going to sneak back in from whence he came just a few moments ago here. If you look at the minimap, you'll see FNX, his goal of this was to spread out this defense, and he's done just that. One player in the B-Halls, one player connector, and one player at A. So basically at the moment, he's got... Three one-on-one -on -one fights wherever he finds him. The issue is he just has to win this one quick. If he spots Pasha, that has to be a quick kill. Otherwise, it'll be a one-on-two very quickly as Snacks is here for support now. FNX is still waiting for to catch one or two of these players from VP peeking their way out, but they're actually doing a great job of holding a pass, but at least against where he's peeking out from. FNX, though, has been flabbergasted there. And as he can't figure out where exactly they're coming from, Pasha's going to be able to roll right out and shut him down. A nice distraction for Snacks, just firing off some shots in the smoke to make... FNX's attraction uh, or attention weighing away from the triple boxes. So 10 to 10 VP. I mean, they survive. Their, their money is still weak. They still don't have a whole lot going for them in terms of bankroll. So it's going to have to be another win. Up on Fallen. We haven't seen it quite yet on the CT side. Right now, we will see SK. Start to hold actually again at the edge of top mid. Not necessarily pushing in for it yet. And there's good reason to this too. You can see how large the push was from VP in the early round, although they don't actually follow through with it. For the most part, they're just going to stick back here and also Bialy holding the close angle to watch out for a T ramp push. They've even, I believe, they've got Pasha boosted up too on the van position, just watching for pushes from the apartments there in that corner, as you can see. So the VP guys want to try and play some close contests here for when SK finally do decide to push their way up really to any area of the map that they want to try to take control of. It's actually crazy how much utility Virtus Pro has used to gain nothing. They don't have a kill. They don't have any kind of special map control. All they have is one flashbang left into this round. So huge advantage for SK in that regard. Four Molotovs, three smokes still to use, and a number of flashbangs. So SK, without applying a whole lot of pressure, Virtus Pro may be getting a little bit antsy in this round and using way too much too soon. And now we see them moving in to take control of things here. VP, unfortunately, as you mentioned, don't have a lot of ways to respond to this besides just pure raw aiming power. They are going to slowly be contested up towards the connector first, but also making sure that they do flash these players out back by Cat, keeping them away first. And now finally looking to strike as the time gets lower and lower, down to 35 seconds here. Smoke initially into the connector, but Fur, in just a moment here, he's going to roll right through that as they are getting ready to move. And FNX takes that early damage. They don't actually spot Taz. He's able to go in the smoke. Fallen's going to find that first kill, but all of a sudden, big surprise. Taz pushing through, catches that kill. Unfortunately, that's the only thing that Virtus Pro have found so far. The rest of the members of SK have been dominating up to this point, although Stax is looking to change that. He's going to find a kill on FNX there. And actually, Pacha picks up another one. Fur, in the meantime, catches that trade, takes out Pacha. This is still a two-on-two, two, though. And Virtus Pro are already in position to retake. There's Taz with another one. Taco trades this out. It goes into a 1v1. And he's going to fall back over here down the T-ramp as Taz starts to slowly push in. Up on top of that steps position now. He sees the peak from him, and he's going to find that kill. So it's going to be VP that take the lead once again against this SK roster. Past double digits and now up to 11-10. Phenomenal retake. It was so close to slipping away from them. And Snacks gets the critical kill. Just one in that round. And then Taco maybe overextending a little bit there, crouching and staying out in the open far too long. A great win from Virtus Pro, but still the money is low. It comes down to a one on one. They haven't been able to build up any money. SK knows this. And so off of this, of course, VP now have to look to capitalize. Finally, we need to see them get that big edge that they've been failing to get. And we almost saw there too, Taz going for the cross. Was definitely spotted by a couple of the members of SK. No shots fired for now, though. And we do see Fur at the same time also getting into another very aggressive position there inside of the apartments. Falling back, though. And while we do see the SK players finding some of the early setup from Virtus Pro, they don't do any damage. What a monster round Taz had in that, in that previous coming through the smoke like that. Gets three total kills, including the one on one. Very, very brilliant play once he gets blinded up in a tough spot. This time, SK very much spread out. Virtus Pro is happy to give mid control because Snacks with the AWP. The first round we've seen it on, on Virtus Pro rings out with a kill. That's on to Taco. So he's the player over at A. That's, that's, he's the one who keeps their option of falling back into the A bomb site through Palace, through A ramp, and now they don't have that anymore. Everyone in mid or in these B halls. So options are, are shutting down for SK Gaming. 
But slowly, though, they will start to move in for the same type of control we were seeing on the last round there. Taz taking a duel over here, back out towards mid, and Neo doing the same. But definitely, we see the Virtus Pro players end up coming out on top of things. So smart, though. Look at how they, they take these fights. They get a little bit of damage in the intel, and they just fall away. They don't want to commit to a fight in a five on four. They know they have the advantage. They know, again, even though their economy is weak, so is SK's. Neither team has any utility. Bash has a flashbang, and that's it. It's going to come down to winning battles. And right now, only Snacks is doing that for VP. Fur and Cold stuck on Catwalk with basically no options until FNX gets that kill. That's Neo drop, but Pasha is still here waiting. Hiding in the corner, there's Fur, doesn't clear it out. Pasha going huge, he can't get another one. But the reinforcements, Taz is here. Snacks is in market, they're so close, but Cold Zera, star performance and FNX again. VP, this round is collapsing around them. They just got the plant with five seconds up to the clock, so it all comes to Bialy now as he's gonna look to re-enter the site. But as you mentioned before, no utility left on any single player in this match right now. So it's all gonna be on Bialy. However, take a look at the two T's at the moment. They're both looking over in this direction. FNX are just in time, but not enough. And now, Cold Zera only at six. 6 HP, Viali try to pull off a bit of a mini simple there. He gets some more damage in off of that one. He's gonna wrap around the corner. The miss shot, now he's on his pistol, but he's gonna catch that kill. VP win another final 1v1, and they're jetting ahead now. That is incredible. Oh, the range of the AWP just couldn't win it, Viali. What a stunning one on two to win. FNX goes down, and he, I mean, he even tags him here. 6 HP brings him down to five. What a tough battle, and thankfully, Bialy picks his pistol up on the way in because he runs out of bullets, and that would have been the round. But he does manage to retrieve it there, and with that, it's used to win out. Came down to the wire there, too, even on the defuse. No, not only was it for SK to push their way into the bomb zip, but for VP even to find that final 1v2. Big clutches indeed coming out for the VP roster, and it's keeping them in this game and in the lead, and it's once again brought SK down onto a lackluster buy. Still Tech incredibly, three Virtus Pro players at zero dollars. Pasha on 50, there's no money, but Pasha, doesn't matter how much you have if you get those kills. The op is out before Taco takes him out. Oh, Neo, this is such a tough spot. Taco again showing his quality, but there's gonna be a fast flank as Taz comes up the stairs. Snacks again with two off kills. This is constricting on SK Gaming. Nowhere to go in this bomb site. Fallen now stuck alone here too with no positioning. Very little intel as far as where these VP players are going to be moving in from on him. He knows that there should be one somewhere along the apartments and in the market, but beyond that, he's blind to where this third player could be working in. He's got to be very, very cautious of the timing of this retake too. As after that smoke was tossed out to just enable him to get the plant to begin with, he's got nothing left now. It's all coming down to himself and his op, along with that tech nine that he's got stowed away. Yeah. VP being very, very patient about this. They're not willing to rush this at all. They're just slowly sneaking back in. They take it together too, which of course is the smart option. They're going to try to crunch on the site. Fallen looking to hold, but he turns his back at the wrong time, and Taz is going to grab that final kill. So it'll be the full 10 second defeat, of course, but VP had plenty of time. So a 13th round up on the board for them. It's incredible how low this money has been at any one of these points. These last three rounds, if SK were to have won any of them, then Virtus Pro would have been forced back onto a save. And they've all three come into, I mean, the last two rounds were one-on-one, -on -one, so this has been incredibly close. Three plants, three diffuses for VP. They're up 13 to 10. Now, this is the round that's going to be important because SK Gaming that last round only had the pistols, only had the Tech Nines. This time, they'll be able to have whatever they want. The Ops, the M or the AK-47s, excuse me, they'll have all the rifles and utility they could need. SK now taking the pause here to first pause of this half, and again, it's really showcasing how much of a great game that FNX is currently having. He's currently sitting at 27 and 17 above the next highest player, who's down at 18 and 15. That's fallen, and as you mentioned before, too, fur and cold at this point, not really showing up. The two lowest fraggers, both of them down at 10. Yeah, I mean, it's just not often you see that. Cold Zera has been one of the most consistent players since he broke into the professional scene since SK, then Luminosity picked him up. Like, he's had, I think, only one round of a sub 1.0 rating, and he was at 0.99. So, I mean, this is the strength of Cold Zera. This is why people think he's the best player in the world. Not because of his, not because of his outstanding skills. It's more so because of the consistency in which we see it event after event. So a little bit lackluster here in the semifinals, but it's not over yet. 10 to 13. Slow and measured for SK to start this round. Taking their time with it too, just holding outside of top mid and inside of those backbeat halls. We've seen this lineup before when they expect a VP to play it aggressively out towards mid, but they're not doing that. They're just playing it to their usual default lineup, and the only difference of these players working their way over there into the B halls now is going to be FNX lined up at the palace to make some noise later on. More than likely though, unless they work their way back out over there down towards the underpass, which is actually what they're doing now. This will turn itself into an A hit. 
lot of quiet across the map, and there's the first spot of the round. And Fur and Taz see each other. They don't fight for it. Fall away for the moment until Taz looks like he wants to go for this peak, almost finds the timing. And he's gonna maintain his aggression. Fallout's not ready for that. He doesn't think that's a possibility whatsoever. Taz now with the advantage. Oh, he gets stuck. Hits the box. He's gotta fight his way out and he can't do it. For a good return. And all the meanwhile, SK slowly coming up onto this A bomb site. FNX from Palace finds one. Posh is the next to challenge and he goes down. String of unfortunate mistakes here from Virtus Pro is now gonna cost them quite a bit. The whiffed off shot there along with Taz getting caught, pushing his way back into the A-bomb site now, forcing him to fight behind that box position. Neo, though, wrapping back out here. He grabs another one for himself. He's gonna try to go for the second, but Furt punishes, and now it all comes down to Snacks here, looking to clutch another situation here. This would have been the third 1VX clutch in about three to five rounds here. We'll see if it's plausible, although SK, they're hunkered down, and this one's gonna be tough to accomplish, and I believe that Snacks is actually just gonna call this one off and fall back to save. Yeah, re really smart from him to save here as well, if he can actually do it. He's gonna have to fight his way out. This is, I mean, this is equally smart by Taco to try and cut this off and make it difficult for him to survive. In fact, if Snacks is gonna get pushed from two angles, I don't think there's a way out of this for him. And indeed, he's not even gonna check behind him. There's FNX, they really could have used that save. As much as we've talked about the economy, just to bring it up one more time, he was able to keep that AWP. He would have been able to drop an M4 I think now Virtus Pro might have to sit around out with just pistols. They don't really have enough to mount too much of a fight here. And if they did, it would be risking a whole lot. So now the VP, and this is another thing, as you mentioned, to keep in mind too, is they are just right down on here with nothing to work with in this round at all. They haven't really even tried to invest into any of those upgraded pistols. It's just gonna be USPs and a single CZ sitting on Taz. They've got a couple little bits of utility to try and use, but they've already used quite a bit of it now, and they're down to just that single flashbang sitting on Neo. They try to play it aggressively out towards mid. The Ollie already taken some early damage, and they didn't even realize that Colt's air had already gotten behind top boxes. He's just ripping them to shreds. Him and Fur managed that very easily. Looking like a queen, clean sweep for SK on this anti-eco. Well done, Pasha and Neo, the only two left. Pasha's uh, all the way on the other side, so it's just Neo here. SK gonna claw themselves closer 12 to 13 after this round. And still, I mean, look at, I mean, SK fully understanding the implications and the fact that they're in a semifinal. They're in a five on one, and they haven't even moved the bomb close to one of the site. They want to know exactly where Pasha is before they commit to anything, not leaving anything up to chance. Patience across the map. You don't frequently see this out of teams, and actually Cold gives up the spot, but it's going to be a big win for him. So 12 to 13 now. And it comes down to one round once more. We've been in this situation so many times throughout this matchup now where the scores remain essentially dead even. And VP, through that save, thankfully for themselves, will be able to get another buy onto the board. But as we can see, it empties out their bank account yet again. And SK are actually sitting, well, not too bad if they want to try to force up should they lose this upcoming round. In the meantime, though, it's going to be Neo that grabs that first shot out over there by the window. No one else is going to dare to repeat that there. Taco, though, moving himself up to the palace position and Snacks waiting right around the corner. Shuts down Taco already. It's in a five on three. The switch into the double op catches Taco completely off guard. He thinks he's going to be clear to peek that corner. Ooh, and Neo goes for more. Now it's Taz's turn to peek. He knows Cold's legged, but he doesn't want to commit to it. This double op switch made possible by the versatility of Neo. An impressive player in his own right. And all that's left for SK is to hit this B bomb site. Neo knows it's coming. Posh is here, but he's completely blind. They haven't spotted him quite yet. They hear him out. There's Fur with the kill. Neo's just got to hold on, and he misses that shot. Danger now until Taz gets in. Three on two, and when will Cold Zera? He's been legged, he's been out of the fight, but finally he pounces, finds a chance. Taz knows he has a two on one, and somehow SK has brought themselves back into this round. It's only on Snacks. From a five on three down to a 1v2, and it's now Snacks at the disadvantage position here. <laughs> like so many rounds before, he's got no flashbangs, nothing to work his way back into this bomb site with. He's gonna start the push now, tries to go for that no scope, but it's gonna miss, and FNX will close it down here. Tied again now at 13, and I believe VP are gonna use one of their tactical pauses. How have they done this, SK? That round should have never happened. They had nothing to go on in that round. Pasha, I mean, gets blind over at the B site, but a five on three. I think it's a second three on five that SK's won in this match.
Starts off so dominant for them too. Not only do they bring this into a five on three, but it's right from the start of the round when VP or apologies when SK have absolutely zero control across the map there, Just shutting them down on their initial peaks when they try to play it aggressively. They constrict them to mid, and somehow not only are they able to battle their way onto a site somehow, but also they bring that back in its entirety and still win the round too. Very very impressive from the Brazilian roster, and now they have another great chance to bring this back. Of course, as VP again, they're going to be broken here. All they're going to be able to do more than likely is bring upgraded pistols to the table. What a performance as well from FNX in this map. 31 kills for him. We saw fantastic maps earlier from Flamey, but FNX is matching that kind of an effort, pulling his team to the finish line. And as you said, it's just going to be pistols in this round for VP. We'll get back into the match now, though, as it has been unpaused. And VP early on here have gone for an aggressive stack. Four of their players over towards the A-bomb site while only keeping Pasha to watch out for a B hit, although that seems to be what SK could be favoring early on here. Two of their players already pushing into the apartments. Well, they're keeping the bomb outside of the halls for now, just to keep the options open towards mid and possibly into an A split as well. Well, still very, very patient from SK. They've been caught off guard. I mean, the first Pro showed a tendency on the CT side to get aggressive. Sometimes on eco rounds, we've seen a number of times Taz and, uh, has, has led the charge up middle early on in rounds with the M4. So SK just making sure that's never going to happen. Really coordinating this peak in mid, third underpass. Cold and FNX just now taking control of top mid. All the meanwhile, Taco waiting for any kind of a push. And he might get caught off guard because Bialy all the way down A ramp. It's going to come down to timing here, and it looks like that's going to work out in the favor of Taco. Bialy not turning around whatsoever. They oh. haven't seen each other yet. How is this? Bialy somehow. Oh, he gets the jump on it, but still loses. How does that happen? FNX with the follow-up kill, and it's all SK from here. So unfortunate there, and SK is gonna be able to just run away with this round off of that. Unfortunately, these last two here from VP can't do anything at all. Taz is trying to take some shots with the CZ, but it's all gonna whiff. And for Snacks, returning to the scene of the crying from just a few moments ago where he lost his teammate, but nothing to be scavenged, nothing to be gained, and it's gonna be SK that now take the lead once more, and they'll only be two rounds away from taking this first map. Yeah, and then this was what, 13-11, I believe, at one point. This has been a, a fantastic comeback for, for us, Gary. A mini comeback. It's been close the whole way through, but still it looked like uh, in a number of times Virtus Pro has kind of had this match locked up, maybe one round away from just closing it out. But SK, as we know, they do show resilience. And unfortunately, Bialy, that first bullet just misses narrowly, buys Taco the time to react. So it'll all come down to this next round here for VP. Full investment yet again. And we do see the op coming onto the board for Snacks, the rest with rifles and everything too. But after this one, they're going to be enforcing territory. And while they will have that full losing bonus, it still will not be a great pickup with all the money they've expended here. And SK will have a huge advantage in what could prove to be the final round if they're victorious here on the 28th. There are seven smokes on the map at this moment. <laughs> one just cleared. Seven smokes used in the first 20, 30 seconds of the round. Both of these teams just making sure that they don't lose it so early on. They don't want to give the team the other advantage, despite the fact that SK's come back from, from three to five deficits, still trying to prevent those early losses. No movement as of yet here, too, from SK. They're still taking it They're still taking it very quietly to the usual setup that they've been working with for most of the half. But they got players in the B halls ready to push into underpass at the B site. We are going to see, though, a bit of a jump boost there from Fallen, but nothing, uh, or the run boost there, as uh, nothing is going to be used from that though, since the members of VP have abandoned mid entirely, they've decided to stick away from this one. And instead they're just double stacking over there, but Fallen, an amazing shot. Catches Snacks on the timing peak as soon as he gets flashed, he knows they're gonna move out to kill him. And with that, he's still able to punish, shutting out Snacks. Taz now, he's under a lot of pressure. This is deja vu from a few rounds back. Bialy as well. The, the bummer for Bialy is he can't get out of this position. This is so hard to win this battle against Taco. And one more kill. That's towards the B site. Colt finds a one-on-one. -on -one. Taz falls as well. Virtus Pro, they've come so close. And they're about to collapse. This is going to be a round for SK. It's just Neo left before he falls. 15-13. The critical execution from SK as this half has winded down is stumping Virtus Pro. And like I said, just at the beginning of that last round, even though VP now get themselves up to what I believe is the full losing bonus, they're still not going to have that great of a buy. Needing the utility, we're seeing four downgrades across the table. Pasha, just by pure necessity, he's still not going to have utility despite the fact that he's gone over towards a FAMAS, but Taz and Snacks on SMGs, and Neo working with a scout here. Certainly not that great, and they've gone for a risky stack too. If Fallen grabs this kill on Pasha, that B-side is wide open. 
Well, he's playing it passively at the very least, so not opening himself up to getting picked off. The scout on Neo, two UMPs. This is going to be even more difficult. And SK, we've seen this setup pretty much every single round for the last who knows how long. It's been effective, so why not ultra passive in the beginning? And the big thing is what's helping them out a lot, and I mentioned it earlier, Virtus Pro using a lot of utility early on in these rounds, so later on when the execution eventually does come in, they don't have a whole lot to counter them except their own skill. SK, though, are still holding back in those B halls and on the wraparound from T spawn. Waiting for Taco here, too, as he's been placed in that lurking position just outside of the T ramp. Time runs a little bit low here, but you can see again Neo pushed out. He knows there's nothing in mid for the time being. Oh, and there's also still two players committed to the B-Bomb, so they've got a great read on this. Should it still go forward with its mid-push? And Bialy, he's even going to get aggressive here, starting to move himself up to the T-Ramp. He's going to have a perfect flash. Actually, I believe he flashed himself there. And with that, Bialy's basically going to get the free kill. Well, Fallout had to run through fire. He's down so low. And there's a kill for Pasha. Virtus Pro, not out yet. 15-14 will be the score as Cold in a one on five. He's down to nine HP and he's got nowhere to go. Pasha with two kills. The hesitation from SK and it bites back big time there too. Taco holding on his own. It's knocked out by an aggressive push and when they finally go for the site hit, Virtus Pro had changed up their stack from a 4-1 over to a 4-1, but on the other site, they were all waiting for them in the B-bomb site, and the trap was sprung, so Virtus Pro able to execute that beautifully with minimal gun power. Now they get to upgrade it hugely, and we go into the 30th round to see if it's gonna be overtime for VP or a victory for SK. Still no AWP for Virtus Pro. That switch into the double op was so effective, but they haven't been able to afford the weapon. All M4s and a couple salvaged AK-47s. Pretty standard setup. Taz and Neo playing a very casual crossfire from connector to, to catwalk. And SK is still very patient to move anywhere across the map to apply pressure, letting the clock run down. Cold has the bomb and he's all alone at top mid. He's going to get met up by FNX and Fallen at the moment. But meanwhile, again, Bialy, I mean, he's got he's to know from research that Taco's usually the only one here and he's been taking a lot of liberties. Aggression. A couple times we've seen the last round, especially now he's at the base of a ramp. He can gather a lot of information and actually FNX is the only one coming over this direction as well. So this could be interesting. If FNX goes ramp and Bialy gets this kill, that, that would be the bomb down. Meanwhile, Fallen holding down mid, waiting for, the, waiting for everyone to get in place. And we can see again, FNX lurking his way up to that position too. He's got a bit of support over there, but it's way in the palace. So he's essentially alone if Bialy is able to get this. FNX is gonna check for it though, and he'll grab that kill early on here. Virtus Pro start off with a disadvantage here, and they're gonna have to rotate quickly, but there's so much pressure in mid, they're gonna have to be careful with that. Snacks though, next up to bat here, missing FNX initially, but he grabs that kill, and so did Neo. Cold and Fur respond just as much in power though, but there's Neo again in mid. He's gonna watch out for Cole, but it's a triple trade. Pasha finds another one, and this goes into a 1v1. He's got a huge advantage. As Taco's down at 28 HP. In the meantime, Taco, he's gonna go for the plant, but Pasha wasting no time. Taco over peaks and Pasha, he's gonna clutch it out. We're going to overtime. 15 of 15, SK. They haven't claimed this map just yet. The trades in middle are incredible. And Virtus Pro have to make an own comeback when they're down so much. When SK just grabs hold of this match, it seemed like they were gonna be out, but of course, VP never giving up and fighting for that mid control to the last man, and Pasha eventually just wins it out for his team. A huge one-on-one. -on -one. So that all of a sudden saves Virtus Pro. The big thing I'm worried about though, as we do jump into overtime, is that again, this goes back onto the gun rounds where it, it seemed like Virtus Pro were having their issues. I feel like specifically when they were on their T side, where they gained the advantage was controlling and constantly keeping the money low for SK. They broke them so many times and were able to gain so many rounds off of just having anti-ecos to play with there. The gun rounds still were looking a little bit shaky, a bit better on the CT side, but the T side was looking rough. I mean, this is the product of both teams having effective offenses on this map is because both teams really struggled to establish any kind of money on the, on the CT side. They're, they could barely afford ops towards the end of that from Virtus Pro. That'll be neutralized. It'll be interesting to see if they go into the double op setup right off the bat because it worked perfectly for them. They switch into it halfway through that half and they get two kills. They're in a five on three and they still manage to lose it. But now with the money, they might want to go back to it just because of how effective it was.
And so again, the big leaders for the team, it's still FNX really just paving the way here too for the side of SK. We haven't really seen any other players, you know, lurching up beyond that. I believe he's sitting at around 34 kills. The next highest teammate is down. I think it's still Fallen or someone else like that, sitting down at around 21 there. So with that said, we also we need to see someone else from SK step up and do some of the work here too, because at the moment, it's mainly just FNX finding most of the impact. Yeah, Colts, Colts caught back up, had a little bit of a slow start to this match, but uh, he caught up towards 21 kills, so started to come alive here, uh, you know, towards the, towards the end of this map obviously was extremely needed to, to be forced into overtime but that doesn't bode well for Virtus Pro if Cold or Fur if one of those guys comes along to really help out FNX who's having a phenomenal game uh, then that that might spell the end of VP the question now becomes because both teams did a good job of controlling the CT economy of their opponents when it resets will they have as much success on their T sides you could see a world where the CT side was uh, of overtime was pretty dominant because they start out with 10,000 and with that obviously leading to a lot better control for them, but Virtus Pro are going to be the ones that have to start off on that edge. I believe as the sides will stay the same jumping in overtime, so they're going to be up on that test immediately too. And with the 10k start money there, the other issue is going to be though is that you can still technically run out of money by that third round. If you yeah, well, th that's, the, that's the question, especially if VP goes into that double up setup. Like, I'm wondering if they want to do that because if you do go to double up, you know, you're really you're stretching the economy thin by the second round, and if you lose that as well, then you, then you have absolutely nothing. So scary, uh, you know, some, some momentous decisions that VP has to make here going into this first round of overtime. We are waiting for everyone to, from each team to, to ready up in this overtime to get it started, but it should be any moment now. A double up though, when they did switch to it, all of a sudden it proved so, so successful. It's just the question of, is it gonna remain as good if they continue to use it over multiple rounds? It seemed to have catched the guys from SK off guard when they brought it in on that one round there. Was that more of like a one trick pony though, or is that thing something that they're gonna be able to utilize a lot better over multiple rounds? I mean, it, it, can, it can still be effective. And this is, uh, I mean, this is kind of where the mind games come in is SK, I imagine SK is gonna play this, this overtime, these first few rounds of overtime, exactly how they played regulation, exactly what brought them back into the match when they were down by three rounds, which is that very, very slow pace, cautious to start for the first 30, 40 seconds, slowly gain that mid control. They, I mean, they've just been basically like a, like a snake just coiling around that A bomb site from so many different places before attacking. So we're still waiting, you guys. I believe we've got everybody into the server now and we're ready back up. So with that said, the overtime should be starting in just a moment here, and we'll get into it. And this is only the first map of a best of three, too, which is the craziest thing. We still have the potential for two more of these to come back up, as this has been in a back and forth and back and forth battle between these two squads, and it can only go further as we get onto our next couple of maps here. Overpass being the second, and going over to Nuke if needed for the third one. That being the real test, specifically, really for, for both teams, really. SK showed dominance on in the past, but as the past couple weeks, at least in online games, it was looking a bit shaky on that map. Yeah, that would be, um, oh, that would be, if we got there, that would be incredible. Either way, got to get through overtime first, and they do. They do switch into the double up setup for the VP side. Snacks has one. Pasha has the other. One's going to be at B, one in mid. And here it is again, SK far, far back. Cold Zero alone with the bomb at the back of mid just to watch for a push. Fallen in underpass. Taco watching for a palace push over towards A. And meanwhile, Pasha and Snacks using these long-range angles to gather info, see if they can pick someone off. Hope that someone wanders into their crosshair. But for right now, though, much like you mentioned, it is SK still sitting to that same setup that they were fond of or using in the early round here. Fur is actually going to take a little bit of damage, too. Some spray coming in there through the plywood. I got to bring this up again, though, because this is, uh, this is confusing me so much. I mean, SK hasn't used any utility. They've used a couple flashbangs. Now just their first smoke goes out. VP's running low on everything. Taz has nothing. Snacks has one smoke. And that's the only smoke they have. And that's at uh, like a minute and 10 seconds in the round. So a lot of utility, a lot of, uh, a lot of tools that Virtus Pro can use later on in, the, in these rounds, in the late round situations, is gone. Run boost to peak towards mid and catwalk. Yields them nothing. But it looked cool. It's <laughs> about all it did, though. Well, I mean, if someone had been there, I mean, that, that can definitely catch you off guard. But now, I mean, complete mid control from, control from VP. Snacks even smoked out of window, so that AWP is neutralized. This nade is going to do good. Oh! oh! Hits him on the side of the head. That's BM, but it, the, it's the explosion does the most. Down to 42 for Fallen. Here it comes. It is going to be an A hit. Neo reading this. He's rotating over very, very quickly. Now the rest of SK here too, moving into take positions. A lot of smokes in the connector, but we're actually gonna see Cold Zero just on his own pushing into this B bomb site. He sees nothing. He sees it clear as day. But as they move into the site, though, a bit of a battle. Taz up close gets shut down by Fallen underneath the platform. Though nobody's watching out for. 
for Bialy, but it's the same story. He's only going to get one. Posh is not ready for the push from Fur. SKT quick control, but did they have enough time to get the bomb down? It looks like they just grabbed it. So it'll be Neo in a 1v3, and he's got to be careful this window position. Spots it, though. Takes down Fur, and now he's opened up the 1v2. As he creeps up to the site, will be flashed, but that's certainly not going to stop him as nobody's peeking out to do any additional damage. Moving in, though, around the corner. The guys from SK have such a good setup. If he pulls this off, it'll be an absolute miracle. Starts it off with the tap on the bomb to try and draw them out from their positions, but he creeps back. He's not even checking the corner on ticket. So Taco grabs an easy frag, and it's SK that managed to get the OT advantage here. Yeah, first round of OT goes the way of SK. That that play from Cold, it, it's been so difficult for VP to handle. That's really the second time they've seen it. Complete mid control, information denied by SK. It's beautifully done, and as they're about to hit this A bomb site with a couple up connector, some from the A ramp and Palace, that's when Cold makes his play over towards B site. He knows that if anything, he can. He's trying to find a one on one, but his presence there pulls Neo back away from his cheated rotation really, really weakens that defense, and this is where VP, they've got to worry. They lose this round. The last, the third round of uh, CT overtime will be basically just pistols, maybe a scout. Will be not much with they, that they can fight with. With SK here in overtime, only needing four of these rounds to be able to actually take control of the map, it's certainly going to put them into the hot seat immediately. Because if they do not round something back here, it might be done for if they can't upset a Gandal just that forced up final round on the CT side before they transition over to the second half. SK though early on still playing to that same passive setup and VP not doing anything aggressive to try and get them out, get them out of it. Well, Virtus Pro Chance started out slow, now coming in full force. The crowd wants to see a win here for VP extend this match. Pasha in the B-bomb site, Neo rotating over as well. There's two players here. This is a pretty powerful crossfire. And SK is gonna have to do this through smoke. The pop flash comes out, Pasha, he's completely blinded, running into the smoke, now coming back out. And there they are, they line up for him. Pasha and Neo hold on at B. And VP is not losing a single player yet, all down to Taco. Taco has no clue what to do about this, too. Trying to peek out to look for the trade on a Pasha. He's going to try to go for that, but he's down at 63 HP, and Pasha still not dead on the ground. He's got a flank coming in. Taco finds one, but Taz on the flank shuts it out. The traded round rolls in for VP, and we're back into one for one. That keeps the buys alive for Virtus Pro as we get into the last round of the half. Both teams are still going to be stuck with full arsenals. That's, uh, that's a good hold from Virtus Pro, but SK Gaming again running down this clock. I mean, just pretty much resigned to hitting through that smoke. They have a lot of opportunities for Virtus Pro. So a first round tied up one to one. Either of these teams, both of these teams looking for that last advantage and the op is back in the hands of Snacks. He's got that back in the mid window and look at this. It's gonna back up the aggression from Taz. Cold has been spending a lot of rounds here just watching for this push and are they gonna get into a duel? Is Taz actually gonna have the balls to peek this? I think so, because Neo's here. But with that spotted out, they just want to fall away. Speaking of falling himself, he's sitting back there in the corner too, looking to try and take out that player below the van position itself, and he ends up giving up his pursuit to regroup with the rest of his teammates now. Virtus Pro still hold a good amount of control over mid here, and SK may want to look to change that. They're still looking for the Zay hit. Two players outside of either T-Ramp or the Palace, ready to go back in, and Fur also already pushed through the underpass, but Neo with a very aggressive position wants to punish that. And he's control on top of it. There was a great pop flash against Taco, but Biala didn't want to risk it. Could have essentially had that kill for free, but decides not to go for it. However, speaking of free kills, out here in the open, in mid is Neo. Shutting down for giving them the advantage to start. What a risky position to be in, but it pays off. Fallen now, he chimes in on Snacks. That's a beautiful shot. The VP sniper is out and Fallen. He's got a lot of real estate to work with here. No one's followed this up. He misses the shot. Is Taz going to be able to punish that Fallen? Trying to back away from the fight, and he does. Still 35 seconds left on the clock. Taz feeling a lot of pressure. There's Neo, and he's going to, or Taz is going to fall. Neo's the next one up, and he's going to get aggressive. Cold's not ready for it, but he wins the fight anyways. Bialy now has to push forward. He has to get into some kind of cover, and Taco punishes that as well. It's just Pasha left in a one-on-four. SK looking to take the advantage into the second half of overtime but still some work to do, and it's fallen to close out the round. SK do such a good job in that round of just baiting out the players from VP out of their positions, getting them into angles where it's SK that has the advantage there. They get maybe two or three of the five kills off of that one, and they essentially just bait these players out to the open to shut out the round. So it's two to one at the end of the first half of overtime. Now we're gonna switch sides, and it goes back over to VP to hold onto the T side here, and they're gonna have to try and win all three of these if they want to take control of this one. SK, they'll only need two. Yeah, excellent T-sides from both teams, and, and that's the thing. If I mean, the VP, 
we saw SK with an opportunity to break the money in overtime uh, against against VP. So I mean, if if they can do the same exact thing, win that first round, and then you have an opportunity, like that chance to really really have an easy way of getting uh, that that last and final round of OT. So this could be huge for Virtus Pro. One to two, and this time no AKs, or I mean no AWPs on the VP side. Every time we've seen this, it's been a very fast, very aggressive tactic, and indeed, Virtus Pro is not going for any kind of map control. All five towards A. Looking to be a set play right out of the gates. And they'll be committing to it here in just a few moments. Of course, running through the timer to keep the illusion alive a bit, but not for too long because they haven't watched, they haven't placed a player back to watch for flanks or anything like that either. So they've got no defenses back over wrapped around through Tommen and T spawn. So here we go. Virtus Pro out in the open. It looks a bit scrapped to start it off here as we have response Molotovs coming in for the SK side, but they can't hold it. That's going to be Fallen picking up a nice shot against Taz. Falling back a bit. Snacks trying to push through, but he turns his back against Fallen. He gets a second kill now. He's dominating this ticket position. And while they do get the play for themselves, it's already into a five on three pop though, moves up onto the steps. He's gonna wanna try to change that fur, leaping back in, catches the train for the counter train. It's a third kill from Fallen though. And now it just falls to Bialy to pick up the 1v3 clutch. Keep the hopes alive here for VP, although it's not looking so good. They know exactly where he's playing from here. Nades have found him and tossed in his position of all. He does get one. He can't pick off the other two. Taco finds that final kill and SK go up to match point. Yeah, two chances now for SK to take this map. And Fallen plays that so, so wise, so smart behind that ticket booth. The initial kill jumping out on top and doesn't get greedy, just falls all the way back. And Snacks obliges. It's the exact play that Fallen was looking for to give his team a two-man advantage. They had their chances. I mean, VP, that execute locked everyone out of the sight. It's just the picks from Fallen are so effective. And again, five AKs for Virtus Pro. And so this is it, guys. Now SK sitting on the edge themselves. They want to try and make sure they can close it out here, but you can bet the Virtus Pro are going to want to battle that back just as strong. They shift away from the from the default line of execute that they were looking for there in the first round. Now they're just going to work towards their top mid controller they're very, very fond of. The problem is that, of course, SK are going to be aware of this one. Snacks tries to shuffle out the underpass, but he takes a lot of damage here. There's two stacked up on Catwalk. It's actually going to be Snacks that grabs the first kill, though. However, Taco, along with Cold, look at how close they are to this. They can shut this down so easily. Moving out, Cold finds the first one. FNX with the second. All of a sudden, they're being cut off from behind. Taz trying to change that. He'll take down FNX, sitting back over here in the jungle. It's an even three on three, but they've done so much damage to Snacks and Taz already. But now they have to hold up for a moment here to make sure that nothing else is going awry. Yeah, but you can see Snacks is willing to challenge CT spot. He knows this is where Fallen is. His health doesn't matter against the AWP, but look at how passively Fallen's playing it. He wants to let his teammates get into a better position. Indeed, Taco's going for a very, very long flank. So Fallen and Snacks almost meeting but there's the bomb plan there's the peak a win for fallen meanwhile taco still on the flank just now in t-spawn cold as well looking for someone to change their positioning from the vp side Bialy has the most hp in this last two remaining vp players and he's got a it's gonna come down to timing here he's go he's gonna check it again and he wins it big fight one fallen and cold zero together now trying to get into this bomb site it's map point Going for this retake and Fallen looking for more. They spent a lot of time on this retake and there's Whoa. a win. Jumping shot, it's not planted for Bialy and that Molotov is far too late. Gold Zera is going to get it. That's map one for SK. They're gonna take it four to one in OT here. And with that, SK go up one and oh in the set now, pushing themselves forward. Bialy again, we saw this happen earlier on in the match too, where unfortunately he played it too far back and I'm forced to fuse. He wasn't able to push back into the site in time and that led to his doom and his team's doom here on the final round of this first map. Mirage goes to SK and we'll be going over to Overpass to determine our second map's victor. I mean, what an incredible first map of this series. Back and forth both ways. I mean, neither, neither team really gaining any kind of massive amount of momentum, but the T the T apps from both of these teams just incredibly effective. That's the big takeaway, and that, that's what we mentioned the strength on Mirage. That's why these teams are so exciting to see go against each other. Both teams can rack up these T sided rounds. It's the same way on Overpass. This series is not going to slow down whatsoever. Both these teams are so patient too with the way that they even played their T sides as well. Virtus Pro getting a bit fidgety there in the last couple rounds, but for the most part, they had a game plan. They always went for executing it, and for the most part, there they stuck to their guns even when things weren't really going right. They had a couple tricks up their sleeve. They tried to execute it from time to time, but for the most part, they stuck to those default plans, and it always worked out on the T side. So now an overpass, that's going to get even more interesting. So, I mean, the, the tough part for me is you, we, could, we saw a shot of Taz there right at the end, still at his computer, still almost staring in disbelief, just crestfallen. They let that one slip away. Seemed like they had advantages and number of times in this matchup. 
And this is, it comes back to the eternal question. I mean, repeat, most experience of any team as a unit, most experience in some of their players. Neo, Taz, Posh been playing forever. So, I mean, these guys have been in every kind of situation. So if any team's going to be able to come back mentally from that kind of a loss, it's going to be VP in the next map. All right, guys. Well, the experts are waiting for us up at the analysis desk to talk more about that match. So let's head over to them. Uh, we said it was going to be close. We really did. Duncan, you said that this was guaranteed to be a spectacular game. And the fact that we went into overtime is, no, is absolute uh, testament to that. 19 to 16 then as the Brazilians do pip them at the post on Mirage. I do have myself, YNK and Thorin to talk through this one. And I think we'll start with you here, Yanko, because we've seen the Brazilians take that one into OT. Was that something that you would have anticipated to see go that far? I mean, I know you were leaning towards SK and it, towards the end of that. I mean, definitely so with these two teams, both household names on Mirage, right? You would expect a, a tight game. I, I was really impressed by the mind games between the two teams, how they approached their T sides, how they tried to adapt to how they usually play. SK known to be a more fast-paced team, at least early on, but you saw that in a lot of those rounds, they were kind of like Navi in their executes. With two seconds left, they managed to plant the bomb, really grinding the clock down, waiting out the utility from the VP players, and both teams actually had successful T sides. So like, you're saying that's a conscious decision they're making to try and get under the skin of, of VP? I mean, definitely so. So early on, they tried for a fast push towards the A bomb site. Even though it didn't work, it kind of forces VP to have it in the back of their head. Okay, they might try to pull something similar again, so they have to throw the smokes, have to throw the Molotovs. It was only very late on that actually VP started adjusting and, and saved smokes very uh, late into the round. Duncan, what are you saying about this one? I mean, there are some individual performances that cannot be overlooked. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a fantastic game overall. Taz, obviously, FNX were kind of the heroes for their right. teams. Really good ADR, really good average performance. But it was a game where not many players kind of underperformed, really. It was like a good team effort from both sides. And this is why I knew Mirage would be the, probably the best map of the series overall. Just like when we saw it as the decider in Cologne, neither team can be counted out on either side of the map. So what's happening in both cases is both have a really good T side, but it's just like the CT, they're kind of prepared for what you do early on, so then it's, you have to go deeper in the playbook. You can't just run what was successful early. They're going to figure that out. But at the same time, the CTs, even when they get success, no, it's not over. You can't deny the T side. So you're just trying to contain it. So I think the comeback from SK is what's so impressive here because VP did look like they were about to run away with it at one point. Just while, just while FNX's stats are still fresh in people's mind, take note of how, off, how little he was the first to die. 36 frags, and he's ten, the first to die 10% of the time. Definitely so, had an amazing performance. I, I was surprised though a bit how passive SK was on their CT side early on. They're known for the double op setup, going aggressive in the A apps with it, pushing mid, right? They gave a lot of space and to a team like VP, a team you don't want to give space to. Yeah. They're really good at utilizing that mid control when they have it. You saw how that three-pronged attack towards the A bomb site really worked wonders for them. So maybe a bit slow to get into the game, I, I'm not exactly sure. I think that VP, though, will be really disappointed by the second, their performance in the second half because they threw away a couple of rounds. There was that 3v5 round towards the B bomb side. I felt that Pasha made a, a mistake there because he was baiting a little bit. He was playing to stay alive. Well, in all honesty, he should have just played to buy time for his team to rotate in. He gave too much space to the SK players that were pushing in. Neo didn't expect it either. They were both caught, caught off guard. Uh, Cold Zero gets a kill on the flank and around. That should have cemented basically the, the win for VP, gave uh, SK room back into the game. The good thing about the way this series went is that, okay, I actually thought that was a vital map. I think VP had to win that probably to win the series. But like they did too. Even so, Normally, I, I notice the normal trend is if you're the one who loses the heartbreaking over time, it's so often that that team then gets blown out on the next map or they're just like mentally crushed, they're tilted, they choke, whatever, whichever end of the spectrum they end on, that, that means they don't have a chance. The one thing you can say is VP don't do that in general. So listen, VP could lose overpass, they could even lose it big, but if they do, it won't be because of the effects of this game and being triggered. This is also another round where VP had the advantage, 4v3, and Pasha decides to push aggressively to kill FNX, but they knew it, it was in lower B. No, really, not really a reason to do that. You can just stay aggressively in B, you have good info, you have a forward position so your team can still rotate even if you die. I, I would have preferred if they just fell back and played the numbers, right? You could see that most of those crucial rounds, including the second round, VP one pistol, you have to remember that Balaz the anti-force by round, most of those rounds were lost towards the B bomb site, unfortunately. And, you know, look at us, we stand here and we are, it does sound like we're critical of Virtus Pro, and yet they still took us into overtime. 
Overtime versus the world, well, defending world champions SK. This is just map one of the best of three, our second semi-final, and there's plenty more to look forward to. In fact, something else you can look forward to inst is installing the Score Esports application. If you haven't done it already, we keep referencing that this is a rematch from ESL One Cologne. Grab it and check it out for yourself. You'll have all the details. You'll be able to compare individual stats from both of these events on your phone. So do be sure to check it out if you want to be an analyst like yourselves. It's a good step in the right direction. Of course, news articles and the whole shebang is available in the palm of your hand. And one more reminder, of course, is that Fuse TV have been around. We've se I've seen so many Fuse TV shirts. The crew have been absolutely everywhere getting all of the best angles and shots for this event. It's been two days here in the Barclays Center. And they've been putting together a nice 30-minute compilation that you can go ahead and digest should you not be able to make and catch all of the games and all the action. You can actually see what it's been like to be here. So many fans have been here and so many fans are loving it. If you want to get a bite-sized chunk, that's November 14th. All right, we'll be coming back and talking about Overpass after our break. Will it be the final map? Will our grand final be set in stone after Overpass or will we see a full three? We'll find out after this.